I'm JD the Media Jack, and this is another edition of the Flipside Podcast, episode 450. Today, we're talking with Josh Nielsen, the CEO of Eastside Games. If you're familiar with great shows like Archer, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, as well as Goldberg's, and even Trailer Park Boys, then you might also be aware that there are mobile games of those shows. Eastside Games is behind those and CEO Josh Nielsen is behind those games. We're going to talk about technology. We're going to talk about the hiring process in a day in a world filled with COVID as well as what's coming up for those games. Now, just a reminder, if you're watching this on YouTube, hi, don't forget to subscribe. I really do appreciate it. If you're listening to this on a podcast, either on Spotify or Anchor or wherever fine podcasts are, welcome again. Don't forget to subscribe. Or maybe you are on a format that you don't know that I have a YouTube or this is an audio version. Feel free to watch or listen to this episode or old episodes on the format of your choosing. YouTube, Anchor, Spotify, Google, Apple, and many others. Without further ado, This is episode 450 of the Flipside Podcast with CEO of Eastside Games, Josh Nielsen. You know, honestly, uh, having this has been, uh, it's sad that my dream came true in one small part with my dad joke lifestyle and being a CEO of a company. Okay. Because right when we got our magazine cover, the world shut down. (laughs) What I wanted to do for all meetings is open up all meetings to be like... (laughs) You know, like from the office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, oh, how yeah. embarrassing. And then they're like, hey, wait, this is from March. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're right. And then you put it on the top of the, the garbage <laughs> condition. And you're like, oh, imagine me. And I wanted to take a plane because it was even on all of the, so this is the, the default free magazine that I only knew about this magazine because, uh, uh, like we, we have a subscription and I read it and my friends are on it once in a while and then it's the default free magazine you get on uh, uh, I think both Heli Jet and Harbor Air but every time you fly Harbor Air I always read it and it's like oh what are what's this mining company doing and stuff so I right. wanted to be on the plane and be like what are you <laughs> and be like oh hello but then it was all like you had to wear a mask and everything so yeah yeah there's a game that is in your company's roster that has basically been reimagined and come back to life it's dragon up i remember this being a completely different monster when i first downloaded it and now it's been reimagined is this an idea of yours like a kind of a pet project that you just wanted to see if you can reimagine yeah absolutely we i love this ip this is the only ip that we've ever won an award at a game show from. We won um, both best art and uh, I think it was fan favorite at the used to be called Casual Connect conference. Uh, One in in, uh, San Francisco and then the other one that was in Singapore. Uh, We won awards for both of these for the art. The art is absolutely amazing. And what I love most about bringing Dragon up to Idol. We took the successes that we learned from Trailer Park Boys and we did a side project with Dragon Up is it is one of the best looking games that we've ever made. And I think the reason why is uh, it's got that classic cartoonish look. People love the dragons. Um, We worked on it with our first project uh, and sort of our new thing that we're doing pushing forward is we're working with smaller studios as a publisher. So we published this game uh, with a great new studio called Night Garden, and they were all a uh, crew that was when Bandai Namco in Vancouver shut down. Uh, we cleared a space in the office. Remember when we used to go to the office? We used to have <laughs> yeah. we'd bring back in those scary times when there's an office, we cram them in the corner, which also sounds terrifying to say. <laughs> we, crammed, we crammed them uh, like eight people in a row where five deaths were because that's all the space we had and they worked and they put that game out now they're working on a super secret game second game for us and uh although dragon up didn't have you know you in the games world uh you have passion projects and you have games that are really fun but just sometimes much like you know every entertainment music movies Mm -hmm. um sometimes they're just really good but they just don't meet the 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 financial targets there so it's still up and people are still playing it 
it didn't hit mass appeal, but what it did do is get that team ready to uh, use those learnings and build the next game, um, which I think if you're an entrepreneur or you want to get into games or you're doing a different type of craft, um, I think that's the best outcome to learn from it and then move forward and build your next thing. Hmm. Well, when it comes to the design and the art and the illustrations and even the animations of the characters in Dragon Up, like my heart just breaks. <laughs> I want more. I want to see more in my own roster on my phone because they're adorable and they're, they're unique. And I, I could definitely sense a influence, like a personal influence from you because like the main dragon is based off of a pug. And I know that you have a soft spot for those adorable little animals. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I had a pug for years. Uh, I think influenced so much so that uh, our company crest that we used to have in the old office uh, had a pug at the top. So mm. I think I think sometimes people also just throw a pug on it to push things by me as well because I'll be like a fruit. <laughs> um, so they do all those things. I've noticed some other influences about some of the other dragons that are coming through. And you're right, you touched on a good thing about um, Dragon Up. We started pushing a little bit more, like our fan favorite and our tried and true game is still Trailer Park Boys Greasy Money. Mm -hmm. People are still playing that. Um, I visited some fans in PG that that were, were super players of the game and brought them down some swag for that. Um, we have a whole bunch of people in PG that still play Greasy Money. We still put out content on that. And it was a great game, and we've been able to take with each learning, with each game that we launch, we'd be able to up feel of the game. Feels like uh, it has just a little bit more uh, polish to it, uh, and has a little bit more animation, a little bit more uh, in tune with characters. And with our latest game, Archer Danger Phone, I think you'll really see that next level where a lot of people. Uh, we were very lucky we got to actually work with the team uh, at uh, Disney and Floyd County uh, with the actual Archer asset. So for some people on that team, uh, it was a dream come true because they would actually get to work on a cartoon that was beloved to them and work with the actual assets rather than creating it themselves. So mm. we've now kind of gone into a new level where we're, we're – taking live action TV and IPs and imagining it in a new universe to working with industry leading award winning animation and having to make that into a game, but also having very strict parameters that you have to work with, which is both exciting and also very terrifying. <laughs> yeah. You work with a star studded, incredible list of personalities and IPs. And I understand I, for the best part of the frustration and even the challenge of working within an established universe, but also trying to create original content. You have Trailer Park Boys, Greasy Money. You have Always Sunny in Philadelphia, the mobile game. You have Archer, Danger Phone, which I've been a huge fan of Archer for ever since it launched on Netflix. And what's the last one? The Goldbergs back. The to Goldbergs, the that's right. Like those yeah. three different or four different art styles, five if you include Dragon Up into that list, five different art styles, each with its own look, its own story, its own universe. And not only do you pay tribute to the characters that have already been developed, but you help and you create these different scenarios and these different worlds and these different. Uh, conversations with these characters and it's amazing i mean what's it like uh knowing first of all that you're going to have the ability to work with this ip and then second of all a creative team jumping on board and just kind of taking charge it's amazing uh we're our our goal right now is just to be the biggest narrative idol game studio in the world <laughs> uh, and and we also go after a very certain type of IP like we're the people that made pot farm so right. we know all about building universes and we never imagined when we started that we'd be doing licensed IP but we also found that there's a huge amount of great IPs out there that are looking for a very unique type of developer in order to do that I always say say you know we're 
we're less like a game studio, like it's less like a corporate game studio software developer and we operate more like uh, the Muppet Show um, where when people, when we work with IP, we get a lot of stuff done. We hire the best people in the world, but I think we really get the essence of the IPs um, that we're doing because uh, these are kind of uh, outside of the norm IPs, which I think we're all outside of the norm developers. We just do stuff a little bit differently. And I think the IPs see that and they want us to do it versus even some bigger established studios that do very uh, great games. But I think if you do a great game, but you don't speak to the fans, um, you lose that. And we've proven that with Trailer Park Boys. Trailer Park Boys uh, is still um, successful, still uh, millions of fans are playing it. Um, you know, great superstars are in that, uh, are, you know, I name it and they've been in Trailer Park Boys. We've had Tom Green, Chris with- Jericho, um, yeah, Sebastian and Bach. yes. Oh my goodness, I, and I was now stunned. Jericho and Jericho and Bach were having a tiff on Twitter, and one of uh, Bach brought up that uh, I was in the Trailer Park Boys first, yeah. <laughs> and they, they were arguing that. about that. And I, you know, I when I heard that, I was like, I made it. <laughs> I, ma- I made it, man. Like all I really need now is uh, with it. I'm very lucky because. Um, uh, my founders and my, my, my team and my directors and my managers and everyone that works uh, listen to my cockamamie ideas and I'm very happy that I got to be the studio that, that worked with some of our belo- my beloved IPs um, that I love all this stuff so mm. every game that we made I watch all these shows I love them and um, I always say I you know uh, once we once we pitch and make the littlest hobos hobo game oh my uh, goodness really no but once we do that <laughs> i'll have no more ideas left in me oh. and i'll just have to quit because uh that's about it maybe i'll get them to make they live or blood sport then i'm done <laughs> the dawn of the dead once they do those those are my last four ideas. I'm done. They're going to have to find a new CEO. <laughs> they just basically made everything that all I talk about is uh, that. Maybe maybe throw Cobra Kai in there. Oh, that would be hilarious. But just just oh, you you had you had me at the Littlest Hobo mobile game. Um, imagine imagine a crossover little like uh, mobile game where as little as Hobo with the Beachcombers or something like that. My goodness. Totally. It would probably only do well in British Columbia, but still. <laughs> well, uh, the the interesting thing about that that I think we didn't expect is uh, Trailer Park Boys was the top 100 game in 100 countries, and on launch in Canada, it was the number one app the day that it launched. Not the number one game, the number one app. So we beat out, uh, you know, Facebook and. Um, Twitter and um, Instagram whatever else was there today. I don't think TikTok existed at that time, but what Instagram, we beat out all those for, for a moment, you know, a few moments, a few hours on that day, we, we were the biggest in Canada and around the world, we ranked all in the top 100 in a hundred countries. And what's really cool about that is um, we were able to, I feel like we're able to bring trailer park boys to the world and find new fans for them. And now if you look at the content of Trailer Park Boys, which, um, you know, three, four, I think we're on our fourth year now going into it. uh, And uh, we have more episodes that we've launched in the regular line of Trailer Park Boys than is in the Trailer Park Boys game. uh, Or is in the Trailer Park Boys series. Yeah, yeah. we've, We've covered all the episodes they've had and then they've been such a great IP to work with that they we work with their creative team to cover more alternative timelines and canon for the team for the for the fans. So what we really love about our model is we're able to take a lot of franchises that fans uh, want more from, and we're able to grow those more and more uh, and continue to provide entertainment. And especially when you look at uh how much even if you want to go back and watch all the trailer park boys episodes and you just didn't have time so you kind of just wanted the jokes from it you could play our game and you could get 
an entire episode in you know 15 to 20 minutes and mm-hmm. get into it and then if you want to continue to play you can but you get a bulk of those jokes in there and what's awesome about it is now that uh you know jab of the pug has uh has gone to the little pug's place in the in the sky and uh god rest his uh bad little soul <laughs> uh, my team has been sprinkling in littlest hobo references Aww. in the timeline and i was like there's no way these people were old enough to watch <laughs> Littlest Hobo. So e- either they're the coolest 20, 30 somethings in the world, mm. or they, uh, or, or we've we've turned people on to Littlest Hobo by talking about it. Either or, they're both great things to have. It, it well, I mean, quite frankly, I mean, the Littlest Hobo. What, you watch one episode and your heart just goes out to it. It is an addictive show and. Yeah, <laughs> it's just oh my goodness! You, you're giving me flashbacks here. Um, it Trailer Park Boys, uh, Greasy Money on the mobile mobile phone, mobile devices. You can even download it on Steam, which I did. Um, is a great game, and you can totally imagine. You can picture in the head in your head the the voices and the conflict when you're reading the script on the screen as you progress through each episode. It's it makes sense to me that it is so popular and it became so popular so quickly and and worldwide as surprising that as that is, but it's also a tribute to you and your team and you yourself were just recently honored by being nominated for a great award. Yeah, surprisingly, so two things. One of them we we got on the cover of BC Business uh, Magazine for the business of doing good. Uh, awards for uh, Indigenous Prosperity. Mm-hmm. We're very uh, honored for that uh, and great that they're doing an award like that. Uh, and uh, that happened, it was weird because it happened like the day before everything shut down. shut down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I remember at that event saying we're going to go, but nobody's handshaking. And when I accepted the award, I, I shook his hand and then I was we went home and we basically, uh, over the weekend, packed up the office and told people not to go in again. So, <laughs> so I, like, I accepted an award and I'll probably die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This will be my last, last appearance right there. I love that. Look at you, handsome yeah. son of a gun. Yeah, you need a good, when you're in your 40s, you need a really good photographer to uh, <laughs> get all the shadows in. So, you know, selfie doesn't do it. And then the second thing I was uh, very surprised is uh, BC Tech has... Uh, their annual awards and I was nominated for uh, person of the year. So BC tech person of the year. Um, uh, very surprising. We were going in and we thought Eastside games would be nominated in the announcement for finalists. We really thought we would get um, uh, a couple of the categories we we're in. Mm. One of them I think was tech culture of the year. The other one was, uh, diversity and inclusion that we're going for because we work really hard at those things. We have a lot of work to do, but we we're hoping we'd get that. And then we didn't get nominated for anything. And I was like, wow, it's uh, must be a tough year. Yeah. And then my name came up as um, BC Tech Person of the Year. I think I was wearing a pot farm tuxedo shirt. <laughs> I have one. Yeah. You know the shirt. You I know do the know shirt. this shirt. Yeah. The, the bow tie on it. And uh, it says pot farm and a little, little yeah. bell and stuff like that. So I was wearing that. And then plus I was late to the meeting. And so I forgot my login. So I used uh, our communication manager's name, Liddy Giroux. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I logged in with that. So when they zoomed in on my square, it said BC tech person of the year, Liddy Giroux. <laughs> Are you ready? And I'm like, I'm no. Josh. I, I don't know how to use Zoom, but thanks for nominating for Tech Person of the Year. I clearly know technology, and I will represent you well. So off on the first great foot there for yeah. that, for yeah. that yeah. nomination. Looking the part, showing off the skills. You're checking all the boxes right there. Yeah. Vote for the pot farm guy. Yeah. You know how to use Zoom. It's a great vote for BC Technology. Exactly. <laughs> Um, actually, on that, like you, you, you have it right there on your chest, built in the north. Now, Eastside Games, I love that, Mr. PG. Here we got the uh, Eastside Games. School. That is yeah. so cool. That's wicked. Um, I'll send you one. 
oh, I, done. <laughs> I'll wear it immediately, maybe after waiting two weeks, just in case. Not saying you're sick, just just in case. Um, so what you got to do these days. This is true. Um, Eastside Games is built or is is located in the middle of Vancouver, but you are strongly and proudly northern you grew up in northern british columbia and because of that you and your team have taken it upon yourself to always branch out not just pull from the major hubs which vancouver is known to be a major hub it, it's it's hell it's called the hollywood north but you have taken it upon yourself you and your team to go out and discover and try to shine a light on other hubs what is the purpose of this so I, I grew up in Will River, uh, as you know, uh, and I always I always used to say it's a town of 150 to 200 people. And then when I drove through last week, I'm like, there's no way there was 150 people. Like as a little kid, it looked yeah. like there's 150 people, but I'm like, it's probably like 100 people, but you got to count the dogs and cats, and <laughs> goats yeah. and cows and horses. Exactly. Uh, so really small town that was, you know, uh, strong community. Uh, very blue collar town that's that's halfway between the big mill and PG. So you're constantly battling huge trucks on the way out there. Um, I think my family both loved it and was terrified of uh, of going really fast on that Willow uh, road out there uh, and going out through the intersection. And so um, I've always uh, I've always remained connected with family there and. Um, uh, that's my home and I really even before the pandemic was really talking about BC technology is more than just Vancouver and Victoria and then when the pandemic hit um, one of the things that happened is we can no longer just quickly fly people up from uh, the US or Mexico or the UK to come for an interview and mm. to hire and we're all Eastside Games is entirely remote now we're entirely remote until the new future uh, until the new normal Mm -hmm. of offices whatever that is and that's going to be sometime in 2021 i don't know when that is so um, we're trying to figure that out so one of the things we pushed on is let's start hiring more in bc we're only allowed to travel in bc right now so let's take a look at what's out there and let's hire within our own province and we've been looking at prince george and kamloops and uh Vernon and Prince Rupert, Prince Rupert and Williams Lake and every every town in between because now every company is a tech, BC technology right on their wall says every company is now a technology company and that's true it doesn't matter if you own uh, a logging company there's a component of tech that you use to manage info, inventory track um, help become more efficient and so we look at that and we say, why don't we look at hiring from within? Um, personally, my own journey as well was, you know, I I was very lucky to to grow up where I grew up, growing up in the country, everyone helping each other out. But also a lot of people uh, in Willow uh, didn't go. To, I know in my family didn't go to university. And I think going to university would have, UNBC didn't even exist. Right. It was like, I did go to CNC. Uh, and, uh, but there wasn't, it was a lot harder to do that versus in cities and in places where that structure is in place. A lot of people go to university post-secondary and then find a job in tech. What I'm saying is there's another path to get into tech. You can get to where you want to be without that education. It's a lot harder, but there are companies you can work for and you can learn on the job and you can do that. I'm not saying to use the path that I did, but I'm saying I did get to where uh, I'm happy about being mm. by grinding it out in the city. And I think in the in the future, uh, people can do that from their home office as well. So I'm very happy to say, um, been pushing our our partners that we work with on games. And for Archer, we're working with a great company called Truly Social Games based in East Vancouver as well. Mm -hmm. And they were able to hire uh, one of our first remote hires in the North. And he's working on um, uh, Archer in the community support. So we're able to look at that. And I'm hoping uh, working closely with levels of government to, uh, you know, an incentive for 
it would be great if we can encourage more tech companies to build hubs in northern BC, interior BC, uh, and those remote coastal BC locations to do that. When we when we decided to open up a second office, we could have built anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. and we chose to build our second office in Nanaimo, BC. We had a strong lead in place. We had a few people that could uh, join the team right away and make that really strong cluster to to continue to support our legacy games. And then the great part about it is a lot of people are like, I don't live in Vancouver, but I also can live in a house here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's true. Dealing with the bubble in the lower mainland has not been fun for anyone at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, um, I think the pandemic is definitely going to change just the way that we view work. And you're seeing that you're seeing that worldwide where people are going to uh, be working like a lot of people that didn't come that have lived in the city forever uh, and haven't even seen the rest of BC. I think they're going to use this opportunity to uh, move to a Soyuz, move to Vernon, move to uh, Chetwin, I don't know, and experience like a different life environment that they've never been in. Right. Yeah. No, I, I totally get that. I mean, like I, I grew up in the lower mainland and moved to Prince George as an adult. And I mean, I, I remember spending many of, uh, you know, vacations and summers and Christmases up here in Prince George and just taking in the fact that life is slower here, not, not worse, but just slower here. It's calmer here. There is everything that anyone could ever need or want or use. And especially in this day and age where technology is abundant everywhere, but life is just slower and calmer and more peaceful. And, you know, there's traffic once a day <laughs> and that's it. And life is just simpler so you know the idea of especially with this pandemic and all this technology becoming uh not necessarily more abundant to everyone in general just more noticeable i mean we're using a zoom call which is like i've used a zoom call maybe half a dozen times this year but still i mean it just it helps to communicate people you're right might take the opportunity to go like you know what i don't need to be in this rat race I don't need to be here. Maybe it's now is a good time to go explore and stay within our own health bubble, but still be out and see what British Columbia is all about. And through that, I mean, you could discover who knows what, a yeah, different skill, a different ability, a different desire in life. And who knows what can come of it? You just got to be open to the idea. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, if someone's from a lot of people, it, we bring a lot of people into uh, into BC as well when we're hiring. And this is a great opportunity. I hope a lot of people take this as uh, the silver lining of COVID where you can only travel safely within our own province, follow all of Dr. Bonnie Henry's guidelines and you can go on a staycation within BC and you can, you know, for me, the big three this summer has been you know, swimming in the Willow River, mm -hmm. going to the Willow River store, which <laughs> is still the best store in the world. <laughs> it's cozy. I bought, a, I bought all the kids, uh, all of uh, the kids that were at my mom's and ice cream, and I felt like a rock star. It only cost like, uh, I think, 18 bucks or something. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. A life goal. Yeah. And going to, going to see Mr. PG in Montana. So that's my favorite restaurant, Prince George, because there's none in Metro Vancouver. <laughs> really? No, that's, I did not know that at all. That's hilarious. You have to go to the Burbs, and uh, I don't go to the Burbs much. That's fair. With all that, what is coming up when it comes to the IPs for East Side Games? What can us mobile users look forward to in the near future? Yeah, the uh, that's a great question. And I would say uh, a lot of companies are doing the best that they can in the pandemic. And I was very surprised at how well our team, like remarkable our team has done. Mm. We were able to keep launching more games. We, we worked hard with uh, our technology to launch a number of games this pandemic already um, from uh, Dragon Up, uh, we already talked about the Goldbergs. We launched uh, Cheech and Chong Bud Farm with Leaderly Studios. 
um, which is a super fun game. I think people would really, real people really need a dash of the '70s, and then we have a dash of '80s for you in Goldbergs. Right. And then uh, we just launched Archer Danger Phone, which I think people can play Archer Danger Phone, and they'll get a hint of some stuff that we're doing in the future with our new technology that we're building. So we built a new technology set that we allow developers to get games to market in months, not years. And we have some really big titles that we're hoping to uh, have a little preview near the end of 2020, but 2021, we have some really big games coming out that I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. that are our most ambitious games yet, but I think are gonna be really fun. But what we've really been focused on is not so much new games, but some amazing content for fans of, of Trailer Park Boys. Uh, there are some great new upcoming guest stars coming up that you're going to absolutely love. So play and stock up and get ready for those events because it's going to be amazing. Uh, Dragon Up and Sunny have some great events um, that are coming up and some big new features and gameplay elements for, for Goldbergs that are coming as well. Mm. And Archer is just getting started. So our fa uh, we're really focused in the pandemic on content. We find play level has gone up. And I think that's because um, people are staying home more, uh, not able to go to the movies, not able to go to concerts, not really uh, able to go to uh, bars and clubs and, and any place where there's lots of people or hockey games. So they're staying at home and they're playing games. So our team is working exceptionally hard on providing more and more content. So, so that's what the big news is coming up. Uh, for us at Eastside Games, what I'm most excited about is we, uh, when the pandemic started, we just asked our team, we were, we're very lucky and we are very privileged that we're able to do a job that we can work from home from our makeshift offices and we could push everything digitally. And we understand a lot of people weren't able to do that. So right away, our team has been working exceptionally hard at helping local businesses, especially when everything was shut down to support them and to really help them. And uh, now that things are opening up, we're shifting a little from that, but we also have a lot of incentives to make sure people are really thinking about shopping local during this time. Mm. Uh, the big box stores, Amazon, they're gonna, they're they're all going to survive. But make sure you're visiting your local uh, game stores. When I was in PG, I made a stop and bought some stuff at Great White. It's great mm -hmm. um, because these are the independent sort of mom and pop stores that we have to um, support during this time. And uh, so we have some stuff coming up with that. We have some really cool um, new East Side game collaborations we're going to announce soon. And once again this year, um, we're going to uh, be at Imaginative helping with the games track and really promoting and, and helping uh, Indigenous creators sort of bubble up and, and help with that. So we're really excited about all of those things that we do, not only in making games, but growing the community and help building uh, the game studio. I'm even excited talking about it. Like, <laughs> I just want to, I really feel like BC tech and BC, uh, games ecosystem, uh, can really use this time as a time to grow. Uh, we're the second biggest game cluster in Canada and we're in the top 10 of game clusters in the world and it's only gonna grow. And I see the pandemic as more and more people um, crossing the floor either as hobbyists or joining game studios and to to grow. And you know, I have no doubt the next billion dollar game studio is gonna come out of Vancouver. I really hope it's us. <laughs> but I also equally hope it's one of our competitors because mm. none of us are in competition here. We're all working to build a new, uh, uh, BC Tech is great for employment, uh, along with our other verticals that we have in in BC, uh, and I think it can be a, a long-standing pillar that mm. that we can all invest in, and we can have jobs for years and years in BC, alongside of all of the other great industries that we have that will all continue to grow. And uh, we're really lucky to live in BC. We're really lucky that uh, I always say our 
you know, our superpower in BC and, and, and coming back from Northern BC and uh, coming back from Prince George and Willow is definitely like being raised in that environment definitely gives you a leg up on competition because no one there is afraid of hard work. And it's, it's a totally different mentality than if you're in Vancouver or in a big city and you're trying to do stuff like up, up north, if somebody needs to fix something, uh, you just fix it. Your mm. first inclination isn't call a plumber. Like that doesn't exist. You you go and talk to somebody down at the store, and somebody has a tool, and you try to figure it out, and you you fix it yourself. And I think in the city we've kind of lost that a bit. So I think if we could bring that work ethic and those companies and that drive to technology, it's really going to disrupt, and it's really going to um, make us all better in BC. Hmm. Competition does breed some great products, but really when it comes down to it, collaboration and community builds respect and also you get something better. You get something bigger from that. And I think that's like, that is definitely the mindset of living in a smaller area, a smaller community like Willow River or Prince George, where you have to work together. Yes, you could call a plumber, but a plumber lives out of town and has already got 14 other calls to go to that day. So working together in a community and working alongside your neighbor, helping out, grabbing a shovel or a wrench or whatever, gets the job done and you become better for it. Instead of relying on something else, you now know something new that can come in handy sometime in the future. I love how you have that mentality. You take that forward with you in your job and in your industry. Thank you for that. Thanks. It was always the, it was always the legend of, uh, ask your Will River uh, friends about this. It was always the legend that somebody that you know once took a cab from Prince George to Willow and it was like $120 or they convinced a pizza guy to deliver <laughs> pizza out there and they got pizza. You never <laughs> saw the cab and you never tasted the pizza, but I guarantee you someone has a story and they did it. And I've never seen proof, so I don't know. It was before cell phones, so there's never a photograph or anything, but yeah. it, it's the urban lore that it happened. Yeah, yeah, I've, I'm pretty sure I've heard that story one way or another. That's true. <laughs> Before I go, uh, two more things. One, where can someone find East Side Games merch? Is that even possible? That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> we get this question a lot. Um, uh, we might, we may or may not be doing something in the future uh, that kind of goes around uh, a charity component. You'll be able to order it. The hardest thing, honestly, is fulfillment. Mm. Um, we make digital games. We don't really make uh, merch. So um, we're thinking about that because we do get a lot of requests where people want to buy the hoodies. They want to buy the hats. Um, this one's really popular. Um, That's cool. That, I like that. My, yeah. My mom always puts in like a ridiculous order. Uh, she's like, uh, you need to get, it's basically like a full fulfillment center that I have to send her an order of all this stuff. <laughs> she hands it out a can for, uh, and, uh, and, uh, so that's coming. So that might be coming. The best okay. thing you could do is follow uh, Eastside Games on Facebook and at Eastside Games on Twitter. I'm at Josh Nelson on Twitter. Follow me there. Hmm. And uh, if we do have any promotions or whatever, it's on there. For the Trailer Park Boys game, um, follow both of those on on the socials. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of specific giveaways um, uh, if you're a fan on that game as well. So. They have some specific things, but we're working on it. Follow us, and uh, we'll probably have a limited drop coming up in the near future. Cool. And final question. Please explain the story with the light behind you on the wall. Oh, this light? Yes. I'll, I'll show you the light. Sure. Right. So clearly an Edmonton Oilers fan. <laughs> that is beautiful. That is a beautiful piece of art right there. That is made from a uh, longtime Willow River uh, guy I grew up with in Willow River called Curtis Best Boazny. And uh, he uh, was a huge Trailer Park Boys player as well. Mm -hmm. And he uh, made that light for me after I watched the uh, exhibition game going in. I'm a big Oilers fan. And uh, 
Ethan Bear was playing, and he was the first player in NHL history to wear uh, the Cree Silvix uh, name uh, on the back. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's now going to go into the Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame. I think it's going to go into the Hockey Hall of Fame as well. So he wore that in in the entire exhibition game. Uh, for that and I think that's really cool uh, because um, I'm trying to do that in a different light for technology but I really you know started following Ethan Bear and for my birthday I got a whole bunch of Oilers Nation Ethan Bear uh, shirts with st- with uh, uh, his name in Cree um, uh, my family is Métis and I'm trying to really do a big push to talk about um, being a Métis person in tech mm. and to really start to talk about that a lot. And, and that's, um, being where I'm from, there's lots of other people that are Métis first nations. Uh, and that's pretty, uh, normal. So you don't really talk about, but in the city, it's just something that I found a lot of people, uh, just don't really talk about a lot. And so we just want to kind of talk about that and bring that to light about, one of our big goals at Eastside Games is really try to push how to get uh, more Indigenous people into technology. Mm-hmm. And I think the first step into doing that is to just, uh, when people say see environments that are familiar to them or people that are similar to them, they're like, hey, that's great, I'm Métis too, let's talk about that. Or, or um, uh, they can feel more comfortable in those environments. So we're trying to work to provide more of that and also around games as well. So I think there's a huge opportunity in there. And I really realized this when um, I went to, we were so lucky to go before, back in the olden days, we had these things called film festivals. (laughs) You didn't go to a film, where you went to a film and sat right next to somebody and you're not terrified. (laughs) Oh yeah, I do remember those days. So yeah. I went to uh, Jeff Barnaby's uh, Blood Quantum at Imaginato, which I think is the best movie of all last year. I'm a horror film buff, and it's like Return to Horror, and it's awesome. And so it's just an amazing movie. We went at Imaginato, and um, what was really interesting is the connection to people and movies, there's no barrier. You can go to a movie at... Uh, an indigenous film festival and feel like you can hear the stories, um, uh, be a part of it. And there's no barrier to that entertainment. It just, that entertainment is available to all, which it should be much like, you know, public enemy. It's a, it's available to everyone. You can wear a public enemy shirt around and, and people are like, yeah, that's cool. I, I love them too. Mm. And what I find is, um, there's a, uh, and I think it's for the right reasons, there's a hesitation on people to do that same thing uh, in urban centers around wearing uh, anything Indigenous, anything uh, First Nations, anything Métis to wear that. I made those proud Métis shirts, and then a lot of people are like, I can't wear them because I'm not Métis. And that's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it is we need to kind of incorporate all of those elements into games. We need to have games that have really strong uh you know role models that can uh that can be the heroes in the games we need to move past um you know the the commonality of you know uh red dead redemption uh where uh it's cowboys and indians and we need to reverse that because Mm -hmm. i those games are fun and i'll continue to play them but I also want to play the other side of that game. Yeah. And I think a lot of people do. And when I was at Imaginative, I was like, this is the game I want to play. I want to play the game where where I'm on a brave I'm a brave that's on a horse and I'm ready to jump off and and kill a buffalo. Like I want to play <laughs> I want to play that game. Yeah. And why isn't that game uh, available? And I think part of it is just like making it super normal and and inviting more people in on both sides to talk about it and to talk about um, how we can make those workplaces a a better place. And we have a lot of work to do. I don't have the answers for that. Um, We're working really hard at our team to just first start hiring um, 
within our own province mm-hmm. and then really look at how we can attend more of these things and just i think the first step is just starting the conversation and making it uh places where we have this goal in mind and continue to do that and uh, uh, i'm hoping next time we talk i have a uh, an update that we've done some cool things but we're going to keep trying mm. I think I think one of the big things and one of the big issues, and it's it's just people being afraid of stepping on toes. There's a confusion between cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation. People are too worried about um, things being taken over or taken in the wrong light or f- flying a flag that is what they feel might be inappropriate, not to themselves, but to someone else. And so... Too many times, cultural appropriation gets thrown out there when it's actual, actually just cultural appreciation, respecting the culture that is the the target of element and respecting it and showing it and appreciating it and doing it justice as best as possible. And that is something that shows up every once in a while where someone will just be upset but not because of something that offends them but because they're worried it offends someone else and you go to that someone else and they go no this is fine i don't know what the problem is so we have to uh, truck past that fear and that worry of upsetting people and instead working with those people not unlike yourself and not unlike myself where i too am cream at um working with the people in creating something that is appreciative and not trying to make fun of or even just steal away from yeah so hell yeah (laughs) anyway i've taken way 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 more than of your time than i ever expected but this has been a great conversation thanks so much for spending some time with me today josh thank you merci merci